Our children's mission is to help incarcerated and formerly incarcerated women and their children successfully rejoin the community, reunify with their families, and build healthy, independent, and secure lives. Our Children provides compassionate and comprehensive services and encourages all to live and interact with dignity and respect. I was born in Brooklyn, East New York, in Kings County Hospital to my mother, a single parent who um, had bipolar disorder. You know, it was a rough childhood. My mother um, didn't have the tools to actually be a mom. At an early age, I realized that things just weren't quite right with my mom. I felt more at home out in the street than I did in my own house. And then when I was 19, that's when I got arrested um, for possession of a weapon, and I was sentenced to three years. I don't know why I was carrying a gun. That's what people were doing in East New York. Um, I was about two months when I first got arrested, and like, well, I'm pregnant. What am I gonna do with this kid? But after speaking to the women, speaking to some of the officers, I realized that there was some hope for me and my baby. I was in labor for 24 hours, handcuffed to a bed. Even if I could have family with me, I had no one to call. You know, the, as soon as she came out, they put her on my breast. It's like you already felt all that love. Even though I never received it when I was like little, I knew or I was so anxious to give her all of this love that I had in me for her. You know, I did all that I could do in prison to make me a better person. I was taking parenting, I was in college, got my GED. So I reached out to the nursery manager and she told me about our children and then Sister Tisa came. She spoke with me, she says, don't worry about it, it's gonna be fine. They really were concerned about keeping us together and letting her know that I was her mom. Michelle, she's eight. She's a phenomenal kid. I, I think she's gonna be a journalist or something. You know, I read to her, she reads to me, and it's, you know, it, we have a wonderful relationship. In 2005, I was released. I came to our children, and I stayed approximately two or three months. And then I said, you know what? This is not for me, I I'm leaving. I went back to my mother's house. I had all of these goals, all of these plans when I got released and I've completed absolutely none. I reached back out to our children and I said, you know, Sister Tisa, can I participate in the Working Women program? I serve as an example in the program that it can be done. It's not over because you've been to prison, you have a felony. Your life is just beginning when you realize that you want to take control of it and do what you can with it. I was born addicted to methadone. My mother was a drug addict. My father was a drug addict. I was born and raised around drug addict. I went from taking like a couple of pills a day to taking probably about 60 pills a day, easy. I now was starting to be arrested. And it's kind of like you get arrested once and then you're getting arrested every other week. And I literally was getting arrested every other week. I got pregnant by a drug dealer. I was seven months pregnant. I was still getting high. You know, um, it was almost like I didn't believe I was pregnant or I, I didn't even know what the right answer was. I turned myself in on a warrant. I was pregnant, shackled, in a big orange jumpsuit. Then I was sentenced to 90 days on Rikers Island. And I wound up giving birth to my daughter while I was still incarcerated on Rikers Island. It was lonely, and it was I had, the only people I had there were the, the COs that were watching me. And it was just like, I knew at that moment that I, I, I owed this baby everything. Every bit of life in me, I owed to her. While I was on Rikers Island, I met an advocate from our children along with a mother from our children. It was, you know, the way she spoke about the program and that made me say, okay, this might work. The woman had said to me, I'll see you as soon as you get to our children. And I was like, yeah, right, I'll probably never hear from these people again. You know, I guess I'm going back to Staten Island where I have nothing. I was literally going back to the projects, to the same apartment that I was getting high in and bringing my baby there. That was what I thought was gonna happen. And two days before my release date, here was the advocate like, oh, Sister Tisa got a room for you. And I was like, huh, you, you didn't forget about me? I walked through the doors and I knew that this was where I was meant to be. I knew for the first time, probably since my mom died, that I was gonna be okay. It's not like I can call my mom, like, can you watch Savannah tonight? I don't have that. My entire family don't live here. 
so I don't have family members to turn to. So it's the women that live here that are my family, and they're the ones that I'm gonna turn to. She's got a love for, for us that shadows our past. Our past has nothing to do with who we are today. She loves us for the person I am. I was given simple words, and those simple words made a light go off in my head. And if I can give that to just one person, I mean, I can't even explain what that feeling is. And I remember, like yesterday, this unbelievable crash. But I didn't know what I had hit. And I remember waking up, and they say, ma'am, you've been involved in a fatality. Nobody in a million years in Suffolk County, Long Island, would think that Jody Kennedy could have relapsed. I had been in AA for almost 20 years, so if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. I had all the trappings of, you know, what America tells you is the thing to value, the house, the cars, the built-in pool. I spent my whole life trying to help people. That was my job. And here I had killed somebody. I was charged with vehicular manslaughter and sentenced to four to 12 years in, in prison. This organization is how I'm rebuilding my relationship with my children. Kids came to see everybody, but my kids wouldn't come. And I thought, maybe if I go there, they can help me start to see my kids again. I saw my son for the first time in five years. And um, it was, you know, I don't even know what it was. It was, all I wanted was to rebuild my relationships with my kids. Sister Tisa believes that people can get a second chance. There's a lack of being judged for this horrific thing that I judge myself for that I judge myself every day for. She says, hey, it's okay. We love you, and we're gonna show you how to love yourself again. And that, that's probably the heart of it. You're worth it. People often say our children is about second chances. I really believe our children is about first chances. Our children offers women their first chance at rebuilding a life that they often dreamt about, read about, but never had the opportunity to create for themselves. So when they come to our children and they call us home, we, with many others, give them support systems and the love and the possibility to make that happen.